we're talking about the renewing of the mind. We're talking about how that you can win the battle in your mind because that's where the battlefield is. That's where the enemy steals, kills, and destroys. He wants to control your mind. He wants your mind flooded with his thoughts. So we're, and see, the reason why we're teaching on this is this is one of the primary ministries of the Holy Spirit. So as we start this new series, getting to know the Holy Spirit, the person, the nature, and the work of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit, basically the Holy Spirit, one of his greatest works in your life is he will help you to win the battle in your mind. He'll help you renew your mind with the word of God. God wants your mind filled with his thoughts because his word is truth. And truth changes facts. The Bible says that his word is full of life and full of power. And it comes in, and the Bible says in the book of James that there's only one thing that could bring wholeness to your soulish realm. And when we talk about our soul, we're, we're talking about the part of you. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. The Bible says as you take the word of God and you implant it in your spirit, it brings wholeness to your soulish realm. Fear is dispelled. I mean, it's just wonderful. Peace is there and it reigns in your life. You have great hope of knowing your future. You have a future in God that's good. Amen. So let's get into this. This is week three. We're talking about how to win the battle of the mind. So turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 in verse 2. This is a real foundational scripture. I want to kind of go through a couple things that we've talked about. We've really, as you're turning there, we've really talked about the three levels of mental activity. It's the way God made your mind. On a first level, you have thoughts. And so you have to, the Bible gives us the word of God so that you can think right. The reason why is out of your thoughts will grow your imagination, which is the second level. Of, of mental activity. And so if you have, see, imaginations, what happens in your mind, you don't think in words, you think in pictures. See, that's how come you hear me say things like you'll never see anything on the outside of your life that you already haven't seen on the inside. There are people that are literally living in fear. They're living in depression because that's all that they, that's all that they see in their mind in their life. And God says you can take his word, plant it in your spirit, and now through the Holy Spirit's work, the word of God could renovate your thinking so that you think right. And then all of a sudden now, your imagination, you'll start seeing yourself being, having, and doing what the word says. Satan knows that all behavior comes out of your imagination. That's where all your behavior comes out of. So the word of God literally can set you free from anything, any addiction. It could heal anything in your life. Because see, what happens if you think wrong and all of a sudden now you're creating an imagination that what, is what the Bible calls a vain imagination. Basically what that is is now you're seeing life other than what God's word says. And if, you, and if you live in this, see, then your behavior comes out of this. You're walking around thinking, man, I, this is not working out. I just can't do this. I, so you'll start taking these thoughts by speaking them, and then the thoughts start driving your life right towards that, and you can build a stronghold in your mind, which is like a prison. That's that third level of mental activity. It comes out of those vain imaginations and it takes you prisoner. Now, now all of a sudden, I've got, I've got this thought process that destru is destructive in my life. And I can't seem to change that. Well, I've got good news for you. This is why worship is so important. This is why coming to church, 
right now, the anointing of Almighty God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. And th that anointing can lift burdens and destroy yokes of bondage. It can literally tear the walls of strongholds down in your mind so that you can get free. So we're going to talk about that today. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. It says, and be not conformed to this world. That means don't be pressed into the mold. That was, that's what the Greek would mean in this. Don't be pressed into the mold of the world. The world system is designed to try to press you into their mold so that you think in line with the world system. The world system, God says, the Bible teaches that Satan is the God of this world. And, and what it means is the God of this world system. It's designed to create fear. It's designed to steal, kill, and destroy. But in God, he gives us the ability to live in the kingdom of God in the world system so that we could pull all the money out of it that we need. We could pull all the things out of it. We could keep from being pressed into the mold of the world. The Bible says, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. That word renewing, by the renovation of your mind. It, that word in the Greek means by replacing, replenishing, and refilling your mind. See, what happens, the word of God will go in to your spirit, man, and the Holy Spirit will teach your spirit the word. That's why when you read your Bible, when you first start reading the Bible, have you ever noticed? Or even now, you'll read things and you don't even know what you're reading. And, and always there will be thoughts there. Well, why are you doing that? You don't even know what you're reading. Don't worry about that. This is not, this is not an intellectual book. The Bible actually says you can't see any of this with your mind. The, re the Holy Spirit has to reveal... This is, this is literally God's word. They're God's words which contain his thoughts. Here we go again with the water bottle. So uh, every, yeah, every word of God is like a container. Words are containers, and they contain thoughts. And the thoughts, so the water would be the thought. God's thoughts will produce life. Satan's thoughts will produce death. So this is why the word of God is full of life and power. That means it's active and effective. It goes right to the root. Many times we don't even know what the root is. I know I got this problem. Like for me, I lived years and years and years. I, I just kept failing as a Christian. Uh, I kept not, I just wasn't happy. And, and all of a sudden I realized one day God revealed that the lie that the enemy told me when I was four and a half years old is that I was worthless. I didn't realize it till several years later because the Lord told me, he said, that was planted right after you accepted the Lord. But he planted that lie in me. I used to walk around, even when I was in high school, I never even realized it. The world would be a better place if I wasn't here. Lies. But when a lie of the enemy is exposed, it loses all of its power. And you don't gradually walk free in God. It's like you, it, it just all of a sudden you're like, wow, wait, I'm free. I remember that day. Man, I've been bound and I am free. Free is much better. And I'll tell you, God wants to use your life. First of all, he wants you free because you can't give what you don't have. You can't take somebody somewhere where you haven't been. But he wants, to, he wants you free. He wants you whole so that now you can go not be Bible thumpers. Hey, you need to turn or burn and all this nonsense, right? No, no. It, what does the Bible say? It's the goodness of God that leads somebody to change their mind. Repentance means a change of mind. I'm walking this way and I'm miserable and God comes in my life and I repent. I just change my mind. And I walk with him now. Right? I don't try to change myself. No, I'll let the word of God by the spirit of God transform my life. What the Holy Spirit does, the renewing of the mind, this is what happens with you. It's the Holy Spirit will pull out on the outside 
who you are on the inside. That's what he does. Now, today, if you're sitting here and you've never invited Jesus to come into your heart to be born again, the Holy Spirit will be talking to you today. But he'll be talking to you about one thing. He'll be trying to convince your heart that you that to give your heart to Jesus, to convince you that the God of heaven loves you and has a plan for your life that's good, that you can trust him, that you don't have to know anything. You come to God as you are, and then over time, he literally will bring on the outside, you, you'll literally become who he is. That's the goal. That's the will of God for all of our lives, is that we be fashioned like unto Jesus. Well, how was Jesus? In the midst of chaos, he was at peace. He loved the unlovable. Strong man. Fearless. That's who you are. Because we're in him. So it says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the renovation of your mind, by the refilling, right, of your mind. Why? That you may prove. That means that you may see and identify what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That's why he wants your mind transformed. So that you think right. The process of renewing the mind is God wants you to change your paradigm. He wants you to adopt an entirely new way of thinking. To think like he thinks, not like the world thinks. This is what he wants. He wants you to look at every arena of your life through the eyes or through the word of God's perspective. Through God's perspective. That's what we're talking about today. And when you start the process, only you can start it, but the process of renewing your mind releases transforma- well, transformative power from God, power that comes into your life to transform your life, to change your thinking, to change the way you see life. So today, know that. God wants you to experience his quality of life, not when you get to heaven. No, here. Eternal life does not start when you die and go to heaven. Eternal life starts right here. Basically, what we're saying here is you change into a whole new person by simply changing the way that you think. That, that's what we're talking about. That's the renewing of the mind. And when you change the way you think, now you can identify and walk out God's plan for your life, which is glorious. See, I don't, I don't, I don't just do works, right? No, I only work out what God's working in. Years ago, God told me I was in ministry and I'm doing everything on my own. When I'm in the corporate world, I'm doing everything on my own. Get me in that that boardroom and I'll close this deal, right? No, not as a Christian anymore. Now I work out what he's working in. Man, sometimes Satan will drive me. You need to pray more. What do you mean Satan will tell you to pray more? Oh, Satan loves it when you pray or read the Bible out of guilt or if he's driving you. Man, I'll go to a movie, right? I'm not doing anything he wants because I understand I am to work out what he's working in. So I don't stress. If I have any care in my life, I roll that over on God. The Bible says that I could humble myself by rolling all of my cares on God. What are cares? That Greek word literally means in 1 Peter 5, 7, it, it most of what has not even happened in your life yet. Do you have any what-if scenarios in your life? Gosh, what if this happens? Oh my gosh, what if, I, what if I don't get this grade? What if I don't pass this test? What if I don't get this promotion? What happens if this symptom gets worse in my body? What happens if my financial life gets, goes backwards anymore? You take all those what ifs and you give them to Jesus. He says, cast the whole of your care once and for all on me because I care for you. So we live light. We live, we live free. We're not stressed. We're at peace. 
and it has, it brings strength. Now I can stir up the joy of the Lord that's in my spirit, and now it makes me strong. How strong? Well, to define how strong I am, you have to see, you have to ask yourself how strong God is. Because see, I, I'm not trying to live in my strength anymore. When you change the way you think, you'll identify God's will for your life. So we said this last week. We said John 15, 7 is the foundation. This is a foundational piece of the renewing of your mind. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words, my words abide in you, you'll ask, that word ask is a little vague. In the Greek, it means you'll call for, You'll make a demand for, you'll require whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Go ahead and pull that scripture up there. Does it say that? John 15, 7. It doesn't say it'll be done for you. It says it'll be done unto you. You know why? It can't be done. See, it was already done for you 2,000 years ago. But now it'll be done unto you because it's already yours. Well, what do you mean whatever I will? Well, see, when the word of God abides in me and I abide in him, guess what? My will and God's will become one. So what that is, see, our whole life as a Christian, what happens like today, right now, if you have ears to hear, you're, and you're allowing the word to come into your heart. The will of God comes into your heart in the form of his will. Or I'm sorry, the will of God comes into your heart in the form of his word. You've heard me say this. But as you delight in him, the will of God will come out of your heart in the form of desires. All of a sudden, you'll desire to do this. You'll desire to study this in school, to be this. You'll desire that. It's part of your path. See, God, to, to find out what you're to do on this earth, it all comes by just making a decision to take your eyes off all of that and just seek him, knowing that he will just illuminate that for you and show you. See, in your life, how I ended up here, pastoring. See, this, this is God's church. It can't fail. Why? Because whatever's born of spirit is spirit. Whatever's born of flesh is flesh. So it can't fail. Well, how I got here is I had to literally step out of the ministry and appear like, go back into the corporate world, appear like I was going backwards. Now that wasn't God's best for me, but because I was trying to do everything myself, I'm doing all this ministry stuff, and it's not, it, I mean, God's blessing the word and everything but it's, it, we're suffering, so I step back. It seems like I'm taking a step backwards, but that step backwards catapulted me here to what I'm to do with my life. See, God will always get you. This is, this is following, renewing your mind, following the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is what it always will do. It will always ensure that you are in the right place at the right time. Now, this is an important part. With the right heart, doing the right thing so that God can just add things to your life. I'm so glad we followed the Lord. And I gotta tell you, we're just, we're, we're just barely getting started. Because I gotta tell you, we're living in a time of acceleration. I believe we're gonna do 50 years of ministry in a year before we go home. It's gonna be glorious. So this is a foundation. See, abide, this word abide, it involves what you do with your mind. The word abiding, it, what, this is what it literally means to abide in him and his word abides in you. It literally involves being consciously aware 24 hours a day, seven days a week of his indwelling presence in my life and in your life. God wants you consciously aware of his presence. Because this revelation, it grows in you. And all of a sudden, you face something in life that's bigger than you. But it's not bigger than who's in you. 
And you, you know that my God will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And he's greater than anything I'll ever face. And he always causes me to triumph because the battle is, was already his and the victory is already mine. It's already done. So what we're talking about, the renewing of the mind, is we continually refill and replenish our conscience, conscious awareness of his indwelling presence in our life all the time. Boy, it'll change your life when you, you wake up in the middle of the night and you know that the God of heaven is there. He's with you. Have you ever woke up and you've had some crazy thoughts in your head and just depression and, and all this stuff and literally in a word it could just go away? Because see, the enemy has no power. But the presence of God is amazing. You abide in him. How you abide in him is by increasing your awareness of his indwelling presence in your life. And the Holy Spirit does that. He, he will literally increase, increase to where you see a depth of knowing that God is with me, that he never leaves me, that he never forsakes me, that he's always there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse 9, or I'm sorry, verse 19. You don't have to turn there. You can just write this in your notes for time's sake. It says this, what... Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? The Holy Ghost, that's the third person of the Trinity, the mighty Holy Spirit. He's in me as a believer, which you have of God and you're not your own. See, we are living temples. This, this body that you're seeing, see, I'm not a body. The Bible teaches that I am a spirit and I possess a soul, which is my mind, will, and emotions. If my spirit left my body right now, it would be, it would be with the Lord and my body, this empty shell, would just fall on the ground. But I'm a spirit that possesses a soul and I live in a body. But here's the thing. My body is literally, and, and even my spirit is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It belongs to him. I'm to glorify God in my body and my spirit because they're his. That's right. Oh, I'm so glad. See, see, when you accept the Lord, you're his. That's, right. That's, right. That's okay. That's good. But when you realize before you're his, he's yours. All that he is, is yours. God is saying to you today, you, you get all of me. That's, that's, see, don't buy religion. Religion will talk to you about you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to, and you know, and I mean, just crazy stuff. It'll bind you. But relationship says God, that's the God of heaven going, come on, walk with me. When you're around me, see, it's not a matter of do's and don'ts. No, you get around God and walk with his indwelling presence in your life. You'll walk free from sin. You'll walk holy before him and you'll experience life. And you'll never judge anybody but yourself. Because you'll see any other thing that anybody else is doing in their life, all you'll want to do is pray for them because you go, oh, yeah, I could relate to that. I was there. Come on, right? Or, oh, gosh, yeah, I could relate to that. I'm there right now. But I know, I know I have the victory. Right? <laughs> we must be rooted and grounded in the fact that God is for me, that God is with me, that God is in me, and that God goes before me. What does he go before me to do? To make crooked places in my life straight. In Isaiah, Isaiah 42.16 is powerful. Isaiah 42.16 says, And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. And I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. Isn't that good news that you don't have to walk in darkness? To be honest with you, as you walk with God, you can't. Oh, because as you step, he'll lead you to dark places. But the minute you step there, 
He makes darkness light. Oh, how that affects your life and how that affects the life of other people. You start saying to people, listen, just follow me as I'm following Christ. He's so good. He'll walk, he'll help you walk everything out. He, I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. See, God, before you ever showed up on this earth, has a plan for your life. And although the enemy might have been working overtime and you might have things in your past, guess what? There's one principle in that book that's amazing, is that the past of an individual is never to affect their future. That's all over this book. You cannot tell where a person started out where they will end up. Because God changes everything. This is why Moses, you know, I think when Daniel Eric Groves was here, he brought out that fact. When Moses saw that burning bush on Mount Horeb, and he turned aside to see this sight, and God told him, Moses, take your sandals off, because on this, this ground you're standing on is holy. What that was, it was a cultural thing for him. God was getting ready to promote him to a new place. And God says, I want you to take your sandals off. It was a type of, I don't want you to drag any of your past victories or none of your past defeats into your future. You walk clean into your future. God has a future for you. God has restoration for you. you if you could fog a mirror, you haven't messed it up. The verdict is not up. And he has a way of turning it. How does he do it? He'll make darkness light before you. He'll make crooked places straight. And if any other preacher or anybody else is preaching this nonsense, I don't care if they're on TV, I don't care how many letters they have behind their name, show me that in the Bible, what you're saying. Because my Bible says God is good all the time. My Bible says God is good because his mercy endures forever. God, the word of God says he loves me with an everlasting love. It's unchangeable. It is not based on me. This is huge. See, knowing this affects what you do, where you go, how you behave. And I'll tell you how it really affects. It affects the boldness that you walk in. Boldness is not arrogance. Arrogance is I'm all that. Boldness is he's all that. Boldness only comes one way, comes from knowing him. So Psalm 37.4 is a big one. We talked about this desire thing. Psalm 37.4 says this. Delight yourself. Notice you have to do this. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Those desires are expressions of his will for your life. Delighting involves abiding. It involves using your mind. Delighting involves thinking. You, to delight in the Lord, you're going to have to think right. Delighting involves mental imaging. It affects your imagination. Now, it's of your spirit, but what it does is it affects your mind. It affects how you think. It affects what you see on the inside of you. Delighting is meditating in God's word. Delighting is allowing your life to be aligned with God's word. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as you delight in the Lord, will align your life with his word. It'll literally move you into the perfect place, the right place at the right time with the right heart. When you're applying for a job or you're applying for a, you know, a school or, or whatever, God, the favor of God will come and it'll align you. See, God, you already have a path. And that path is God says, I want to make you the head and not the tail. I want you above only, not beneath. I want you blessed when you go in and when you come out. If you, need, if you need healing in your body, I've provided that. If you need finances, I've provided that. I, if, you, if you have debt in your life, listen, Jesus instituted an eternal jubilee. We are living. See, on the Jewish calendar, last year was the year of jubilee. 
Once every 50 years, everything goes back to even. All debts are canceled. But not, not for us as Christians. Jesus, when he came out of the wilderness, went into the synagogue, and he read that scripture in Isaiah, and he said, listen, from this day on, this is fulfilled in your ears. It is now, I've, I'm establishing an eternal jubilee. There's so much good news here that religion can't fathom it. But the word of God, see, God, we're not talking about teaching you how to think positive, like I said, right? We're talking about how to, God wants to teach you how to think unlimited. That all things are possible now to him who believes. That I can do all things through Christ. That as I meditate in his word, day and night, I will observe to do all that's written in his word. And then I will make my way prosperous, and then I will have good success. I will be like a tree. I'll meditate day and night, and I'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water, whose what? Whose leaf never, never withers. Everything is fresh in God to me every day. I yield all of my fruit in my season, and whatever I do, this is Psalm 1, 1 through 3, whatever I do will be brought to maturity. I walk through life and God brings it all to maturity. And what it does is it connects with the desires of my heart. That's what we're talking about, the life of a Christian. Delighting changes the way you see things. Your delight is his delight because you're abiding in him. You, you literally are walking with God this is what happens. You begin to evaluate and analyze every obstacle, every decision you face. This is how you evaluate it. This is how you analyze it. In the light of the fact that God is always with me. Everything as I go through life, I analyze it, right? I do this. I analyze it. I evaluate it based on the fact that God's with me, that he'll never leave me and he's greater than anything and he's already provided it. So I don't have to fear if I'm going to fail because I'm not going to fail. The only way I could fail is if I just choose to. And here's the really good news because I've chosen to before. You know how it says the game's not over until a certain lady sings? <laughs> here's the deal, guys. The game is already over, and you already have the victory. So just because you might have chosen wrong now, just go back and choose right. It's never too late. So you don't have to worry about it. Get out of the boat. The Bible says God will uphold you. So here's an example. You go to the doctor, and you get a report that in the natural looks bad. You don't say, oh no, what am I going to do? You do say, the healer lives in me. See, it just causes you in every situation to respond from the word of God. See, when God wants to get at information to you about his will for your life, his calling on your life, what does he do? He accesses your soul through your spirit. God never talks to your mind. God doesn't lead you by your emotions. Your emotions are designed to fuel you to run hard after God. They're not designed to lead you because your emotions, they're a poor guide because it'll make you feel, you could feel defeated while you're walking in victory. See, so you, see God, he accesses my soul through my spirit. He talks to my spirit. Satan can't talk to my spirit. So we got to renew our thinking because, see, Satan has access to our minds. You can't stop a thought from coming to your mind, but you can surely take the thought captive. And as you get the word in your heart, now the Holy Spirit will help you take every thought captive. The Holy Spirit, what he does is he imparts revelation knowledge of God to your heart. And when you get revelation knowledge of who God is in your heart, it brings direction to your life. You don't have to seek the direction. You seek him. 
and all the direction. He, 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 the Spirit of God, it, he, his word will be a lamp to your feet. It'll tell you right where you are, and it'll just tell you the next step. I'd like to tell you he tells you all the steps, but he doesn't because he wants you to walk with him. But don't worry. All the steps are there. And as you walk, you take that step, and then pretty soon the next step. The next step. See, God wants you to let go of your purposes in life and your course of action, the way you work things out, and embrace his. Because his are good all the time. So if we allow wrong thoughts, it can build a vain imagination. So I just want to define that for you real quick as we keep going with this. Are you guys doing okay? We're throwing a lot of stuff at you. Just realize, for everything you're hearing, the Spirit of God is imparting things into your life, right? Just imparting things. And oh man, he'll bring it to your remembrance right when you need it. Amen. So a vain imag imagination. So if we start thinking wrong, if we start allowing our thought life to be based on what we're seeing, what we're feeling, what we're hearing, what we can touch, what we can taste, now we're, we're getting in trouble because the Bible says to look at natural things, it can only produce death. Because all these natural things are subject to change. This is the realm where Satan can move things. We as Christians, we look at what is not seen. We look at the word of God because the word of God is unchangeable. The Bible says to pay attention to spiritual things is not death, it's life and peace. So the Holy Spirit has to teach us how to do that. So if we think wrong, now how many of us in this room probably even now are thinking wrong in an area. Probably all of us. See, the one thing I love about God is he doesn't, have, he, doesn't, he doesn't come to you and say, okay, right, Tony, you know, you're messed up in about 150 areas. We need to work on all these today because wow. Right? No, he just says, no, just this, this one area, don't worry about all the rest of them. I got your back. But this area, I just want you to give this to me. I want you to show you how gentle I am. I want you to show you how, I want to show you how good I am. But if I, if I think wrong, vain imaginations will cause behavior that deviates from the way God intends or the way God mandates in his word. See, a vain imagination, if the word tells me to go this way, a, va a vain imagination will cause my behavior to go this way, right? But your vain imaginations, have you ever, have you ever done something that, that you're going, I shouldn't be doing this, right? You ladies, have you ever dated a guy? And this guy's just not the right guy. And you stay with him. Oh, I, here's a good one. I'm gonna lead him to Christ. That's a great one. Yeah, wow, right? Or, or the guy, you're dating this girl, and you just know it's not right. Or you're doing something, and you know it's destroying your life, but you still do it. It's just a vain imagination that's probably grown into a stronghold. And I'm here to tell you today, the anointing of God, the mighty Holy Spirit, will destroy it and get it out of your life. You can't, or you could try, but if you want to be free to where now... You look at alcohol or drugs or you look at some of this destructive internet pornography. You look at some of this destructive stuff and you're like, that is not who I am. That's what we're talking about. So wrong behavior comes from wrong thinking, which is a product of an imagination that has just not been renewed or I'll use this word, has not been weaned. You have to wean your mind. You know, like weaning a child, right? Have you ever tried weaning a child off, like a baby, off breast milk? Weaning a child off something, weaning, weaning a child, oh, okay, now we, here, here we go. 
this little guy or this little girl has got to learn how to sleep. So I got to wean them. <laughs> but, but what happens when you wean a baby? Volume, right? Ah, I mean, the world is coming to an end. And we look at them and go, what is your problem? But then we walk through life going, ah, we do it. <laughs> it just looks different. So what a vain imagination is. It's, how do we get off on all this stuff? It means, the word literally means empty. Worthless. With no purpose. Everything about what Satan does is empty. It's worthless. Oh, well, it might ignite your flesh a little bit for, for a short time. But sin it's a sin is spiritual. It literally always produces death. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Oh, it's really fun right here. But then all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I'm not having fun anymore. It'll take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay. It will cost you more than you ever want to pay. That's sin. God knows this. See, everything in Satan is empty. Boy, I'm glad. He, I hope he's listening. Yes, he empty. You're empty. You're worthless. Yes. You have no purpose. Right? That's who he is. That's darkness. Anything that is not in the Bible or anything that does not align with God's principles, it's vain. Because God is life. Right? Anything that works in life it's, it's, it's because it's God's idea. Get that. Anything that works in life, it's because it's God's idea. It came from him. So why can't God give you an idea that could change things in the earth? He wants to. I mean, I think of Pastor Edwin. For the last several years, he's been researching pancreatic cancer. That They pay him to do that. Whew. I can't really explain much about that. But think about it. He has the God in him who knows the cure for pancreatic cancer. Isn't that something? Vain imaginations build a picture of our lives on the basis of anything else but God's word. Satan wants to build. If you're facing something physical, he'll want to build a vain imagination in you that this is not ever going to get better and it's only going to get worse. If, you're, if you've went through something, let's say you've been sexually abused, you've been raped, you've been, you've been hurt, you've had this incredible thing happen in your life, listen, the God of heaven is saying, I'm going to teach you how to walk away from this because what will happen is your mind will continually build this picture and try to build your life on the fact that you are not whole, that you're wounded, that you're worthless, that, that you can never be fixed, and all of it is a lie because Jesus already made a way for it all to be erased so that you can walk free. The world needs to hear that. This is huge. Romans 8, 5 says this. For they that are after the flesh, that means the natural man, do mind or give attention to the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the inward man, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. See, death is always a result of being carnally minded. But here's the problem. Death is not always instant. It, it, see, see, death's not always instant. Usually it's a process of corruption that will take your life in a downward, downward spiral over time. So have you ever been in a situation where you just kind of learn to put up with something? Do you ever notice that Satan doesn't go, okay, good, I'm done. I'll never mess with you again. Nope. If, he, if you start moving towards the cliff, he'll, he actually will start pushing you harder. He'll start trying to drive you. He, he wants you off the planet in a way to show the world that Jesus isn't real. But he can't do it. 
this process sometimes of death is, is slow. And, and what I mean by this is it's very hard to see. But see, the Holy Spirit will bring revelation to the word and will lead you out of death into life. He'll, leave you, he'll lead you out of turmoil into peace. He'll, he'll lead you out of weakness into strength. All these things. He'll lead you out of something where you, you can't see yourself ever overcoming, and then all of a sudden, he'll, he'll bring you to a place of freedom where you've already overcome it. This is what he does. The carnal mind is dominated by these vain imaginations, but the ability to limit vain imaginations and focus our thought life on the filter of God's word, it's very critical to renewing our mind. And, the, and that process, we can do it. We can do it in God. So we've talked about thoughts, imaginations, and strongholds. The three levels. Thoughts create imaginations, which create, can create strongholds if they're wrong. The first arena that you're going to have to deal with, though, is going to be strongholds. Because many times you're, you have thought processes going on and they're detrimental and you've been doing them for years, you don't even see it. And you've created a vain imagination in your mind that's fueling a behavior and then all of a sudden you get to the point where you're like, okay, all I know is I'm really unhappy. I'm not fulfilled and I don't know how to break out of this. So, so you'll deal with a stronghold. The vain imagination is now progressed into a stronghold. But here's what happens. You can come and sit like you are right now under the anointing of God. The Holy Spirit is here. Yes, he is. His anointing is here. Yes, he is. And, and I'm telling you, the anointing of God will come in and will not break off the this, this stronghold, the Bible says it destroys it. It destroys the yoke of bondage. What is the anointing? It is the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit, who's God. So, so here's, what I, here's the good news today. If you're bound in something, in a thought process, if you're, if, you, if you're facing and you're bound, it could be depression, anxiety, fear, whatever it is, I'm here to tell you, you don't have to break out of it. The anointing will break it off your life. Hear me with that. I've experienced this. All of a sudden, it's like it's too good to be true. The anointing will break something off your life, and you're like free. Now, Satan will come back and try to put stuff on you, but... This is why you surround yourself with believers of like faith. This is why the Bible says you're going to flourish as you're planted in the house of God. You stay in this, and, and, and boy, you walk around. And there's times where i got to call Leanne up and go, Leanne, you know, can you just tell me how blessed I am? Tell me how healed I am. Man, tell me how strong I am in the Lord. You surround yourself with people that can do that, and they help you. Isaiah 10, 27 says this, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now this is Isaiah 10, 27. And it says it'll come to pass in that day. Guess what day? It's this day. It's been this day for a couple thousand years almost now. The Holy Spirit is on the earth. The anointing is here. He's here this morning. The New Testament says it this way in 1 John 2.27. 1 John 2.27, it says, But the anointing which you have received of him, it abides in you. So this anointing that, that, that will bring that stronghold down, it is in you right now as a believer. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, 
and is truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. The anointing will cause you to abide in him, which means his words are abiding in you, and now you're living 24 hours a day, seven days a week, consciously aware that the God of heaven is in my life. This is not me saying this. This is the Bible. So we see in the word of God, the anointing could be administered several ways. It could be administered by the laying on of hands, Here's a big way. You see the anointing during praise and worship. Corporate praise and worship. When you come to church, you should come expecting. See, I come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Why do we raise our hands? See, what happens? This is just an outward expression of what I'm doing in my spirit. I'm opening my spirit to the Lord, and the Bible says lift up holy hands to him. This literally means hands that have nothing to hide. Have you ever lived life hiding things from people? God says, don't hide it from me. Come to me and worship me in spirit. Lift up holy hands. You're saying, God, here I am. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. And right now I'm receiving I'm, as I'm worshiping you, I'm receiving the anointing that's breaking off yokes of bondage in my life as I worship you. In your car, you can do this. Now, if you do this, don't lift both hands. And don't close your eyes. That might be bad. But, uh, you know, so be led by the Spirit, but not with your eyes closed when you're driving. Okay, so that's it. A product of the gifts of the Spirit, which are, are given severally as, as the Holy Spirit wills, that's another form of the anointing. The anointing of God must be applied. Why? So that you can start controlling your imagination. The Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit will help you think right. It'll help you think right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the, in Romans 1, verse 20 and 21, it says this. It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God says, even all the creation shows that I'm real. Okay? And it says in verse 21, it says, Because that when they knew God... They didn't glorify him as God, and they were not thankful, but became vain, empty, worthless, and with no purpose in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. What caused it? It says, when somebody doesn't glorify God and is not thankful, now, that's the breeding ground for vain imaginations. So how do we live our life? I don't, Philippians tells me don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your, let, let your prayers be, your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will mount guard. See, this is, think of it this way. These people began to mentally image their lives unfolding in a way that was not consistent with God's word. They began to mentally image their lives unfolding in the way the world says. They did this, why? Because they were not glorifying God as God, they were living for themselves, and they were not thankful. See, right in this verse, it reveals the power of praise and worship. Praise and worship is a time it's set aside specifically to give God glory and thank him for what he's done. And what it does is it literally causes me to think right and have, have an imagination filled with the way that God thinks. Why are Christians so beaten down and so weak? Well, you could see it in church. Here's their, here's their stance during worship. 
Does this mean they're a bad Christian? No. It means they don't have a revelation that God's with me. I'm not conscious of his indwelling presence and his unending, unmovable love for me and that he's got a plan for my life and that he wants to walk with me through this glorious thing. Many get, see, this is what people do. You know, Mark, can you hurry up? Can you get through worship so we can get to the teaching? That's dangerous. Because you're not going to get much teaching if you haven't really opened your spirit to worship. Praise and worship is one of the most powerful opportunities for you and I to cast down imaginations, to control our souls and fulfill our destiny. You should pray for this worship team all the time. When you're up on this worship team, what are you doing? Are you just playing a gig? Are you just playing or singing? No, you are literally helping people cast down imaginations, control their mind, their will, and their emotions, and walk out their destiny. This is how important this is. Corporate praise and worship many times is weak. Why? Because personal praise and worship in our own personal life, when we're not in church, is weak. Oh, I want to encourage you. Man, get up every day and just start seeing what happens on the inside of you when you're like, Father, I just thank you for your great love for me. I thank you so much for your word that I was lost and now I'm saved. I thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for my prayer language. I thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in my life. I thank you that Jesus was made a curse for me so that I could be redeemed from the curse of spiritual death, sickness and disease, poverty and lack. I thank you and worship you that you have a plan for my life, not just in this life, but for all eternity. All of my trust and hope is in you. Do you see that? We must seize the moment during praise and worship to exercise proper control of our soul. Have you ever noticed you come in here or in your own personal life, have you ever noticed how much your mind will give you problems when you think about starting to worship God? You think about starting to pray, your phone will start going off, emails, Twitter, all, you know, all, I mean, everything starts happening because he doesn't want that. When you do your imagination, when you worship God, your imagination is supernaturally freed to build a picture of your life on the basis of what God says about you. This is so very important, guys. We're talking about walking free. We're talking about the renewing of your mind. You can't separate the Holy Spirit from it. Well, I just don't believe in that Holy Spirit stuff. Okay, well, you need to change your beliefs. So keep coming because your beliefs come by what you hear and what you think about. And we're not going to come up here and give you our opinion. We're going to give you scripture after scripture after scripture to show you how it really is. Because God loves you and wants you free. I still remember the day when the Lord said, Tony, I can't wait until you meet yourself. I'm so glad I have. I'm so excited to meet the rest of me. Well, listen, that's what I have for you today. I believe we're going to have to go a little bit further because I want to talk that when I said wean the mind, I want to talk about that because there's, there's a way to do that. So let me pray for you before we go today.